All right, so this is the review assignment. So it's the most important assignment you've done so far. So this is a summary of Unit 4, and there'll be uh, questions from the other units as well. So what did we do in Unit 4? So we talked about what a critical number is and how to find it. So the derivative or where it's undefined. So you take the derivative equal to 0 or where it's undefined. Yet what an absolute extrema means relative or local extrema maximums and minimums, first and second derivative test, points of inflection, concavity, knowing how to graph, a lot of graphing in this one, mean value theorem. So there's an overview of what we did this unit. And now we're going to practice. So number one, without using a calculator, find the intercepts and relative extrema, then draw a graph. So let's do that together. So I'm going to write the function down. I'm not going to worry about concavity here because it's just a parabola and I know it's concave down because it's negative x squared. So let's do this. So here we are. So I'll do a few things. I will take the derivative. That's negative 2x plus 4. I will make it equal to 0. I'll add 2x and divide. And then I can draw a number line. Now, I already know this one because it's a parabola that's folding down. So it has to be positive negative to be concave down. But if you plugged in a number that's smaller than 2, you would get a positive answer. And if you plug in a number bigger than 2, you get a negative answer. And I know it's concave down. So we know at 2, to find the y coordinate, we plug it back in here. So 2 squared and 4 times 2. So it's negative 4 uh, plus 8. That's 4 plus 5, that's 2, 9. The last thing I want to do is find where the intercepts are. So to find where the intercepts are, I actually will factor out a negative 1, to, so the power term is positive. That makes it possible to factor. So factor out a negative 1. And then what's left over, you have x minus 5 and x plus 1. So if I solve this, positive 5 and negative 1 are my x-intercepts. So if I sketch this, go to 2 and 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 2 and 9, and then 5, 3, 4, 5, and negative 1. I could also see that the y-intercept, if I plug in 0, is 5. And then you have your sketch. So this is a new way to find the vertex, is to take the derivative equal to zero and seeing where the turning point is, is using the calculus tools rather than the algebra tools we had before. And like trap, my cord is trapped. Here we go. Number two. So number two, you're given f at x equals x times the square root of 16 subtract x squared. You're given the next derivative for the first derivative, 16 minus 2x squared over the square root of 16 minus x squared. You're given the next second derivative, 2x cubed subtract 40x, 48x over 16 subtract x squared and then 3 halves. All right, so I'm going to write that down. So first of all, it talks about the domain. So I'll just write that. I'll show you my work in a second. It says the intercepts, uh, turning points, or extrema, um, points of inflection, and then graph. OK, so let's come back over here. So in number two, we have a function, the first derivative and the second derivative. And these are the things I want to find. So for the domain, which one do I go to? Just the function and tell me what x cannot be if there is a restriction. And because we have a square root, we do have a restriction. What's underneath the square root sign must be positive. So if I look carefully, if I plug in a number bigger than 4, it's negative answer, or smaller than negative 4. So the domain goes from negative 4 to positive 4. So if I plug in a number smaller than negative 4 and square it or bigger, so another way to do that is to take that and make it equal to 0 and solve it. And if you would solve it, you get the answer positive and negative 4. And then think about the square root and to get your domain.
intercepts. That comes from the function too. What makes this zero? Well, zero is an intercept, that's for sure, and positive and negative four. Positive four makes this zero, and negative four makes this zero. And again, you can make that equal to zero to solve it. So you could add four x squared, divide by four, What am I doing? Why is there a 4x squared? It's just 16 minus x squared. So add x squared, take the square root, and the answer is positive and negative 4. I don't know where that, I think I was looking at the answer that part. That's where it comes from. Extreme, well to find the extreme points we need to take the derivative. So the derivative is actually already done. What makes this zero? Look at the numerator. So on the side, I'm gonna make that equal to zero and I'm going to solve it. So I'm going to add 2x squared, divide by 2, and then it's plus, and I don't need to reduce it down, so plus or minus the square root of 8. So when I do a first derivative number line for negative root 8 and positive root 8, I go back to the derivative and I plug in numbers. So I also have to make sure that it stays within my domain restriction, so I need to make sure it's negative 4 to positive 4. So when I do that, it doesn't go on forever. It goes from negative 4 to 4. So I need to plug in a number. So this would be like negative 3. So root 9 would be 3. So negative 3. What would happen if I plugged in negative 3? So negative 3 would give me a negative answer on top because that would be 18. And it would be a positive answer. In fact, it will always be a positive answer on the bottom. So a negative divided by a positive. So first, it's negative plug in a number in between negative root 8 and positive root 8, so a simple number would be 0. So if you plugged in 0, you get a positive over a positive. And then if you plug in a number between root 8 and 4, like positive 3, again you would get a negative answer. So what we just found out here is it decreases, then increases, and then decreases. So we found where it's increasing and decreasing. We also found uh, where the turning points are. So we have a turning point at negative root 8, and that's going to be a minimum. And we have another one at positive root 8. I'll find the y coordinate in a second. So we have a maximum at positive root 8. So those are my turning points, my extrema. To find the value that goes with it, you plug it into here. So if I square root 8, it's just 8. So this is going to be root 8, root 8, that's going to be 8. So let's show you the math behind that again. So we have root 8, so I'm going to plug in root 8 for x. Here, I'll do the maximum for you. So you plug in root 8 uh, for x. That's what it looks like. and then you get 16. Now root 8 squared is just 8, so 16 times 8. 16 take away 8 is 8, so root 8 times root 8, that gives you 8. Now for the minimum you actually get a negative answer because it's negative root 8 in front and here you get a positive 8. So negative root 8 and negative 8 and root 8 and positive 8. Let's do a little math. Point of inflection. Where do we find that? That's again up here. So up here is we make it equal to zero, so I'll do that over here. So it's 2x cubed, subtract 48x equal to zero. So I'm going to factor out a 2x squared. Leaves me with x minus 24. So that's it. Check again. They don't have an x squared, so just an x. So x squared minus 24. So I have 2x equals 0. So one value is 0. If x squared equals 24, and you take, so if x squared subtract 24 equals 0, add 24, take the square root, just recognize that the square root of 24 is not in my domain. So I have to cross this one out. 
So this answer is not between negative 4 and positive 4. The square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 24 is too big and negative root 24 is too small. This is not in my domain, so I don't include it. So the only number in my domain is 0. So from negative 4 to positive 4, only 0 am I going to test. And then when I come back here to test it, I'm testing, pick any number between negative 4 and 0, so like negative 1. So negative 1, a negative times a negative would make it positive 48. That's going to be bigger than negative in front. If I plug in a number like positive 1, you get a negative answer. So at 0 is a point of inflection. If I plug 0 into here, you get the answer 0. All right, we are now ready for our graph. So I just need to count to 4. 1, 2, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. I can do that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Count up to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's for my maximums and my minimums. So we have an intercept at 0, 0. That's also a point of inflection. And at positive 4 and at negative 4, then we have turning points. So negative root 8 is pretty close to negative 3. So I'm just going to estimate it as negative 3, negative 8. And at positive 3, positive 8. And then draw your graph. Now, no, it's not going to go beyond here. So those are endpoints. So the first part is concave up, then the concavity changes and it's concave down, and those are end points. And you just graph this really challenging looking function by using algebra and calculus to be able to graph it. All right, on to number three. You can watch. Number three. So for number three, it says, without using a calculator, find the domain, the vertical asymptote, whole x-intercept and m-behavior, then graph it. So we're going to write this down, f at x equals, why don't you sit right here beside me? Okay. 2x cubed, subtract 48x, 16 subtract x squared. to the exponent of 3 halves, right? No, 2x, oh, I totally wrote the wrong equation down. Let me do that again. So from number 3, it is just 2x squared plus 2x over x squared subtract x. All right, so let me just write down what I need to find. So I need to find the domain. I need to find the vertical asymptotes. I need to find where the hole is. I need to find the x-intercept and understand the end behavior or the horizontal asymptote and then graph. All right, so let's do that together. So step one, the domain comes from the denominator. So if I take the denominator equal to zero, it'll tell me what x cannot be. So factor out an x and then solve it. I'm also going to put that here in the denominator and it will tell me that all the numbers work for x but there is a restriction so the two numbers x cannot be are 0 and positive 1 when I look at the numerator and factor it organize my papers here you're going to factor it a common factor of 2x and I'm left with x plus 1 I want you to notice that the x's remove. So I'm left with 2 x plus 1 over x minus 1. Obviously x plus 1, x subtract 1, they don't match, they don't remove. So if I look at the denominator, that gives me the vertical asymptote. So the non-removable part, what makes it 0? So this part of the domain restriction gives me a vertical asymptote. What removed creates a hole. So this part of the domain restriction gives me a hole. I plug 0 back into here, and I get 2 divided by negative 1, which is negative 2. 
Now the x-intercept. So only what's left do I look at. So what's left on the top, the x-intercept's at negative 1. That's what the 0 is on top. The end behavior comes from the power over the power. And I'm going to write the end behavior as a limit. So what is the end behavior here? So if I went power divided by power, I'm left with 2 in both directions. So both positive and negative infinity. So that also gives me a horizontal asymptote. So when I graph it, I'm going to do a horizontal asymptote. All right, I think I'm done now. I can now put all these pieces together. So I'm going to do a sketch of this graph. So I'm going to start the vertical asymptote. That's at 1. Let me change colors here. And then I have another horizontal one at 2. So I'm going to draw a horizontal and a vertical line. I also have a hole that's at 0 and negative 2. So let me do that hole right there at 0 and negative 2. What else do I know? I have an x-intercept at negative 1. So I'll put that there. And I know the end behavior goes to 2. So I'm going to do, so we have, I'm going to plug in a number to get a point to curve through. So positive 2, if I plug it into here, positive 2, so I'm just going to, right now, just so I have a point, another point on the graph, 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and then 2 take away 1 is 1. So it's 6 divided by 1. So at 2, 6, up here, we have a point we can curve through. So at the vertical asymptote, it goes up to infinity. And then it curves, and the end behavior goes to 2. Here, then the other side, it goes to negative infinity. That's because the exponent on x subtract 1 is an odd exponent. So it is the vertical asymptote with an odd behavior where one end goes up forever, the other down. Follow it, hop over the hole, go through the point that we do know, and then curve and the end behavior on both sides. And you've now analyzed and graphed it. All right, number four.